This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. We have a very exciting show with you, with my next guest, Dr. Lawrence Brown. We're going to be talking about a subject that sometimes is kind of heavy for a lot of people. A lot of people might get a little bit uncomfortable talking about religion, talking about something that's very important. What's the purpose of life? Why are you here in this world? Where are you going when you die? Death. It's a scary reality, but it's a reality. But you got, you got a lot of weird things attributed to religion. But when you dig a little deep, you see that it has nothing to do with God. People attributing so many different superstitions. Buy this fairy dust and you'll float in the air. Buy this and you'll be safe. All of these things, you see the preachers and teachers out there propagating. And you know what? People are just sick of it. They're sick of being ripped off. They're sick of all the different things that now, you know what, it just doesn't make sense. But we're going to again try to make sense of it all here on The Dean Show. When we come back with Dr. Lawrence Brown, we'll be right back. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is The Dean, this is The Dean Show. 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 Peace be with you. Dr. Lawrence Brown, back on the Dean Show. How are you feeling? Pretty good. Thank you for finding the time. People can go to thedeanshow.com. You have your conversion story and other great shows that we've done with you. You have a PhD in religious studies. You have a DD, Doctor in Divinity. You were trying very hard to be a Christian. You used to be an atheist. Now you're one who's chosen consciously to surrender and submit to the one God. That's a Muslim defining these words I feel are very important. Now, you, you heard me open the topic. Religion is very heavy. People don't want to talk about it. You know what? Many things have been attributed to the religion. You know, people, I, I mentioned fairy dust. People are selling these statues, icons, you know, these amulets and uh, making money. It's become a big business. Preachers and teachers doing cartwheels. It's a big show, showtime, you know, a business. Uh, and you know what? It's corruption and people are exploiting people and people are fed up. They're sick of it. But do we blame God or do we blame the people? Truth being mixed with falsehood. People are fed up. What do you got to say about this, Dr. Brown? Uh... I guess to begin with, I would back up because you said people are sick of talking about religion. One thing I have to say is no, actually people are not sick of talking about religion. People are very happy to talk about religion as long as you agree with them. I as see. long as they're talking about, you know, their brand of religion. But, uh, but actually there, there are a lot of people who don't like to even be approached on the subject. They've become so sensitive, they've sort of withdrawn into a bit of a cocoon and um, I think, uh, I think those sensitivities to a certain degree are understandable for the reasons you just mentioned. You know, people are tired of being woken up on, on Sunday morning by somebody knocking on their door saying, you know, can, you know, can we talk to you about the Bible? Um, they're tired of being approached in different ways. Um, they, you know, they, they, they see or have seen with their own eyes how religion has been manipulated, how charlatans have used religion to, uh, to misguide others. To charlatans, charlatans, please, what, what do you mean by charlatans? Charlatans, basically uh, confidence men, con men. You know? Con men. Yeah, basic, basically people who are using religion as a tool by which to accomplish their worldly ends. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they act like they're all pious and righteous while they're building a you know, $5 million mansion on the donations of their, uh, of their followers. And uh, they, you know, they're, basically, you know, they're basically ripping people off, as you said. Ripping people off in the name of God. Now, you, you heard me mention fairy dust, and you heard me mention, and you just talked about it, uh, manipulation, 
stealing people's money, telling them, okay, no, if you, and you see a lot of this late night, you'll stay up one night and, and you come home and you feel something's missing. You might have just come from the nightclub, you might have just come from a breakup and you sit home and now there's no one around. You got some peace of mind and you're reflecting because it's a rat race of life. But now you turn on the TV and there's someone trying to exploit you. They're saying you buy this dust, we put it in an envelope and we'll send it over to you for, for $9.99 and all your prayers will be answered and now they attribute this to religion and they attribute this to God, these superstitions and all these other crazy yeah. ideas and gimmicks and people just get fed up. What are your uh, thoughts on this? You know, what, what can we say? I mean, we all know, we all know about this. There, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of, you know, so-called holy things in, uh, that are promoted in different religions, whether it's, whether it's holy water or whether it's an action such as faith healing or whether it is something being sold as a sacred amulet or something that will bring you good luck or um, just uh, selling prayers, basically. That's I it, mean, selling prayers, yes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think that, you know, I think that we can just understand that looking from a historical point of view, everybody out there knows that there have been times in history when religion has been used to justify wars, to justify persecution, to justify genocide, to justify all kinds of different atrocities, right, in the name of God. And, uh, and yet, deep down, we know that these are not godly things. The, these things that were done in God's name were not godly things. Now, you might find some people saying, well, yeah, the, you know, the medieval inquisition, the Spanish inquisition, um, that was a righteous thing to do because they have that mind point that is in support of their religious views. But I think the vast majority of people would agree that no, it wasn't. I mean, it, it wasn't. I mean, torturing and, and killing people uh, just because you were intolerant of their beliefs? Is that something that we see in the example of Jesus Christ? Is that something that we see in the example of Moses, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac? It, it's not something that we see in the example of any of the prophets. So how dare somebody come up with that and say that they're doing it in the name of God? Mm -hmm. um, but so, so although there may be some people who defend it because, because it fits their ideology, I think the vast majority of people agree that it was, it, was a, uh, it was a crime, it was a sickness, it was genocide. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking about the, you know, the Inquisition, it doesn't matter if we're talking about different religious wars, if we're talking about colonialism, if we're talking about slavery. I mean, slavery was, was founded upon a religious principle, the curse of Ham. Okay, the concept, the concept that one of the sons of, of, uh, <coughs> of Noah was cursed. And in, in being cursed, his people became people of color and became uh, cursed to servitude. And on this, on this basis, you know, on this, on this basis, uh, Christians justified the parasitic slavery that developed in the history of England and America. They justified colonialism where they colonized, excuse me, where they, where they colonialized different countries where the natives were darker skinned than them on the basis of the curse of Ham. Tell us, Dr. Brown, now, how should people approach this subject with your experience, even though someone might have left their child with what they presumed to be a righteous individual, and now that child gets molested. You have an individual who took their whole life savings and they invested into this fairy tale dust. And now, you know what, they're really distraught. They don't know how to approach it, the matter because they've been let down. Should they give up, even though you have all these crazy things out there being attributed to re the religion of the creator of the heavens and earth? That's, you know, that's really, uh the crux of the matter, and uh, the fact is, of course, they shouldn't give up. But I think what you see that a lot of people do do is they kind of retract into their own private beliefs. A lot of people had enough experience getting sort of, you know, hurt either 
physically or emotionally. Okay, the, num the number of people who were actually physically abused um, by a man of religion uh, are fairly few. But the number of people who have been emotionally abused, who have found that in the end the religion did not give them what they needed, um, found that over time they, they gave away a lot of their money, they gave a, away a lot of their effort, a lot of their, you know, a lot of their time. And they took a great deal from their life, but in the end they didn't get what they expected from the religion. They ended up feeling used, feeling deceived. That number is fairly large. Let's take a break there. We're going to continue on with Dr. Lawrence Brown here on The Dean Show. I just want to say a very simple message. Is the maintainer. One of the, the beautiful preserver. things about our religion of Islam is the, the emphasis on direct ritual and prayer to God directly. There is no intermediary. The lights will go on after the party and the party will end. It's very simple and very clear. There are no superstitious rituals, no strange incantations. It's Time is running out. We might not make it till tomorrow. And this is something that we need to think about. Back here on The Dean Show with Dr. Lawrence Brown. It's always exciting to have you here in the studio. And we're talking about religion. Now, before we continue on, you know, people tune in are not yet Muslim neighbors, and brothers in humanity, they tune into the Dean Show because they want to see what these Muslims are all about. So we know in Islam there aren't any strange incantations, no superstitions, we don't sell fairy dust, we don't want the people's money, we just want people to really reflect what's the purpose of life, why, you, why have you been created, and use the logic and reasoning that God gave you and ask God directly, direct dial up for guidance. It's very simple. God's not a man or a woman. He didn't walk the earth. You couldn't take his picture. He didn't have a zip code. He's the one who created all things, but he's not what he created. It's very simple. It's very rational. So now tell us in your experiences with these people who, again, they are what you said emotionally distraught. What advice do you have for them? How can they get past this and look past this to continue their quest for the purpose of life and why they're here on this earth? Right. Well, you know, here is what I think happens. A lot of people, they become so disappointed in religious institutions, they become so disillusioned that they basically retract into their own private beliefs. Uh, they go back to just saying, well, I believe in God, I believe in being a good person, I believe in the golden rule, and that's enough for me. Um, I tried this, it didn't work for me. I tried that, that didn't work for me also. And then I tried everything in between, or what, whatever this person has tried in their life, it didn't work out for them. So they retract into their own personal beliefs, and that suffices for them. However, um, many people, when they, you know, when they are exposed to a religion that does not ask for their money, okay, uh, it does not try to play tricks upon them, and it does explain what they have experienced up to this point. It does explain the disappointment, disappointments. Why were you disappointed? Because of this. Why are there people misusing religion? Because of that. You know, how does misguidance fit into all of this? It has a role. Okay, there is a, there's a reason why misguidance is there, et cetera, et cetera. When, when you can make sense of this and show how the core beliefs, you know, the core belief being belief in God, belief that God had sent messengers over time, sent revelation over time, but that at the same time, with each stage in revelation, mankind corrupted it, and it's the corrupted uh, revelation that, that remains in our hands in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and so on. So that you can, you can read these books, and, and the, the books of the Bible will not be completely satisfying because you will find within them um, jarring passages, passages that are contradictory or that teach um, things opposite to what we know to be the physical reality. Um, if you can explain all this, explain how all of this happened and how it leads to the conclusion of the chain of revelation, how it leads to a revelation that completes God's revelation to mankind, and that does not have, does not have these uh, disappointing fallacies, then 
then people oftentimes they will find this very refreshing. Before we get to that part that I really want you to, to elaborate on, tell us now for the person who says, you know what, I do believe in God. I'm a good person. I just don't believe in follow, following any organized religion. You hear a lot of people saying this. Sure. How, how do you answer this? You know, it's like living in a society saying, yeah, uh, I believe in America and I believe that there are policemen out there. I just don't believe in following the laws. Well, you can't do that. Uh, our Lord is fair and just. The injustices of this life will be corrected in the afterlife. In the afterlife, we are all going to, to stand for judgment, right? Now, as I said, our Lord is fair and just. To establish justice, you need a few things. You need a judge, right? Yeah. You need a court, you need witnesses, and you need a book of laws, right? The, the court is going to be the day of judgment. The judge is going to be God. The witnesses are going to be the elements of creation that have witnessed everything that we have done, whether it is the angels that are observing us or other people, or even we will witness against ourselves. Okay? But in the end, the book of laws is what? It's the book of Revelation. Now that is what we're going to be judged based upon. If you accepted it, if you didn't accept it, if you did accept it, how well did you adhere to it, and, and so on, okay? So you can, you can go ahead. I mean, it's fully within your, your rights to say it's enough for me to, be, to believe in God and just to be in, you know, just to follow in the line of my personal beliefs. You can, you can choose that religion if you want to, but... The question is not whether we choose that religion, but whether God chose that religion for us. If you believe in God as one God, you have to believe that there is only one religion of truth. One. If there's one God, he's not going to write two laws. Not all Romes don't lead to Rome? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's just, I mean, it's just pretty obvious, right? I mean, you never open up a, uh, a box in which you've just bought a TV and find two different instruction manuals, right? Yes. I mean, you never get pulled over for a ticket by a policeman, and he says, well, let's see now, which law do you want to follow here? The one that says speed limit 55, the one, other one that says speed limit it's is one, 60. It's one law. It's always one. Yes. Okay, there's always one law. Uh, our creator is the creator of the heavens and the earth, right? And he has written one, as he is one, he has written one law for mankind. Now that law may have changed over time. I mean, before Moses, people could have eaten pigs, and after Moses, the law came down not to eat pigs. Uh, in the time of, of Lot, incest might have been permissible. Afterwards, it was forbidden. You know, I mean, there, there, there are issues like this which are touchy, but you can understand how they changed over time. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the, but the bottom line is, in the, same, in the same way that the laws in our society evolve, when I was a child, the speed limit was not 55. Mm -hmm. It was a lot higher. I can't remember, but I think it was even 75 in some states. Yes. Okay. So laws change with time, and in the same way, God adjusted the laws according to the capacity of mankind and the needs of mankind and the needs for, uh, to hold the society together. But the bottom line is not whether, whether you like the laws, but rather whether God constructed those laws and whether you are following what he has bidden mankind to do. We know death is a reality. People don't like talking about it. Some people might tune off right now, but you know, they love, I'm sure, what you're having to say, so they're going to, God willing, continue to tune on until we finish this show. But why is it so, so important to discuss these matters and to have an earnest desire to want to know the truth rather than just continuing to work from Friday to Friday, from paycheck to paycheck, from nightclub to nightclub? living that life, and then you hit the grave, and it's too late, Yeah. saying, I'll figure it out then. Is it too late to yeah. figure it out then, or you need to figure it out no, now? No, when you die, it's over. When you die, your book of deeds closes. That's it. And what you have put forward to the afterlife is what you have put forward in this life. 
I, I remember one guy just uh, telling me, well, if I get to the day of judgment and if I find out that I was wrong, I'll just look God in the eye and say, I'm sorry. Well, you know, if it is acceptable for mankind to apologize in the hereafter, if that is sufficient for salvation, what's the purpose of hell? What is hell there for? I mean, it doesn't matter if, if you're talking about Hitler or Stalin or anybody who has perpetuated the, the, the greatest atrocities in the history of mankind. They're all going to say, I'm sorry. But the question is whether that's going to be accepted. Okay? And, and what, we're, what we're told by God himself, what we're told by, uh, by Revelation is that no. Uh, we are going to be judged based upon our faith and upon our deeds, and that book comes to a close when we die. It's finished. That's it. You got your shot right now. This is a sign itself. This is you're your chance. You're watching, listening. Is it making sense? We're not talking mumbo jumbo. We're talking about a thing that it, it, it just makes good old common sense. Think of this life as a test. Yes. And at the conclusion of the test, the test book closes. You can't go up to the teacher after the test period, pe test period and say, you know, I'm sorry, but I need to change something inside that test booklet. No, it's done. You had your time to study. And that book, that test booklet, is the period of our lives. And when it closes, the test is over. Based upon what you did in that test, you're going to earn your grade. And your grade is going to land you at whatever appropriate level of paradise or at whatever appropriate level of hellfire. May God protect us from the hellfire. We'll be right I back mean, with more here on The Dean Show. Allah, there's only one God. People often say to me, why have you become a Muslim? No, I, I give a very frivolous answer. I say, I want to be on the side of the angels. Tupac is a guy, he's the number one rap artist in the world. He sold over 60 million records worldwide. 60 million? 60 million. He was a young guy who had basically everything that some of the youth would think that life is all about. He had everything you can imagine. The Dean Show. Back here on the Dean Show with Dr. Lawrence Brown, and we're continuing on a very, very important topic, and people can tune in every week. This is what we love talking about, and it makes good old common sense. Some people now, they just have a hard time letting go. They know that this trinity doesn't make sense. They know that worshiping an idol doesn't make sense. Something in their very nature, in their inclination, something deep down in their very souls, they know it doesn't make sense. What these Muslims are right. saying, that there's only one God, you don't divide him like a pie, you give all acts of worship to the one God who's unseen, he's not a man or woman, but he's the creator of man and woman. That's the God we're talking about, the same God that Jesus, Moses, and all the messengers of God, they worship this God, we worship that one God, no intermediaries, no one between us and him, but they cannot let go of what their forefathers did. My great-great-grandfather, he passed this mm -hmm. down to us, and they just have a hard time letting go, even though they know that it's not the truth. What advice do you give for them? Let go. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people learn about Islam as the last religion they ever learn about. And yet when they do learn about it, they say, huh, wait a minute. I mean, here's a religion that is teaching that God is one, that all of the prophets, including Jesus Christ, were men and prophets, that they bore revelation to mankind, but that that revelation became corrupted Right, And it's the different avenues of corruption that have led to the way that religion is manipulated in this day. Okay, But at the same time, there was a seed of truth in all revelation. And the truth was what I have just said. The oneness of God, the, the, the laws that he is conveying to mankind, and that for us to achieve salvation, we have to follow those laws. But as you said, Many people are afraid to let go of what they're holding on to 
because they fear that by letting go, go of it, um, they will be left without a, uh, a backup, so to speak. They, they won't know where to go next. Kind of like a backup uh, parachute when you're jumping out of a plane? Yeah. Now, okay, this is like the story that I w we were talking about actually earlier today. Yeah. Um, and just for, for the viewers, this story was about a, uh, an acquaintance of mine who was on a parachute jump. He had, he had a monitor by which he could hear the jump master because, you know, it's very noisy, so you have to have an ear monitor. When he jumped and popped his parachute, he didn't feel that jolt that you expect, right? Yes, yes. And uh, at the same time that he looked up, he looked up to see that his parachute was spiraling, right? It did not open. And at the same time, he heard the jump, he heard the jump master saying, oh, my God, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead because he's plummeting towards the earth and his parachute didn't, didn't open. And he said that at that moment, you know, the, the right thing to do is to pop your D-rings and release that parachute and then open your back up. He said that at that moment, that was the hardest thing to do because, because you're, just, you're just hoping and praying it opens and it opens and it opens and you know that if you let it go, if you let that parachute go and your backup doesn't work, then that's it for you. But he said that he summoned the strength, he let go of the, the parachute, he popped, popped his uh, back up, it opened, and he's alive to talk about it today. But the thing he said about that is that there have been a lot of people found dead on the ground without deploying their back up, and they went to the ground hoping and praying, open, 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 and all the way to the ground until they hit. And that's, that's how a lot of people are with religion. They're not willing to let go of something they know is not working for them, they know it's not working for them, but they keep hoping that somehow it will come through for them until <laughs> the end. Then it's too late. Forget about it. Then it's too late. Now, people want to get a hold of you. They, like you, you're an atheist. You're trying hard to be a Christian, and now they can relate to you. They want to talk to you about atheism. They want to talk to you about some of your books. you got a few seconds. Please tell them how they can reach you. Uh, please visit my website, Level Truth dot com or eighthscroll.com. These these are both uh, these are both websites relating to my books, my articles, my works, how I came to Islam. And as I said, you'll find a lot of my writings there. Click on the contact us button and it will come to me directly. Thank you very much. May God Almighty the Creator of Allah reward you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Dean Show. Come back every week. We're here, same time, same channel, and just let it go. If it doesn't make sense, let it go. Move on to what makes sense. We're not going to force this beautiful way of life on you, but just reflect if this made sense that you worship none other but the one God, the creator of all that exists. If you can dig that, you can definitely dig the rest of Islam, which simply means to acquire peace by submitting to the owner of peace, the one God. We'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Until then, peace be unto you. You have to pray as if everything depends on Allah, and it does. But you must work as if. Everything depends on you, and it doesn't. That's my point. You see what I'm saying? And I don't like that. I don't like us sitting here. What are you waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? What are we waiting for all these people to come to Islam? What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? When they're going to come? They're going to come to Allah, going to bring these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, put in our hand the ability to do it. Now do your job.